Hello painters, it's Debbie from acrylicpouring.com and today I'm back with, ta-da, bright colours. You know I love my bright colours so I thought I would get a few of them out today and have a bit of fun. So I have been thinking, in all of the paintings that I do, I tend to use uh, white plus colours or black plus colours. I'm thinking, well why do I always use white or black? I know that if I use white it sinks to the bottom um, and almost gives a base for my colours to sit on. So if I were to wipe the colour away, the paint underneath is white. So I can put a lot of white in my pores and it basically falls to the bottom and my colours sit on the top. So today, just for a change, I'm going to put no white, no black, just colours. I've already um, prepared my record, I've put a little label in the middle there and I've just cleaned the surface with alcohol and I was mixing a, bit, um, a batch of cobalt blue and there's a bit too much to go in the bottle. So there's already some cobalt blue in the bottom of my cup. And I've also got chrome yellow, um, a, I think this is warm red, bright orange, magenta and purple. So. I will see what happens. I know that some of these colours, if I mix them together, they're really going to misbehave and go kind of muddy and maybe give me some unexpected results. So I'm going to pour these pretty carefully into my cup, just so that they're in layers rather than mixing together. So I've got a little bit of blue, so I'm going to start now with, oh let's go with some red. And I'm just going to um, add them down the side of the cup like this, so that uh, they're not going to mix too much in my cup and hopefully I'll get lots of nice bright colours in the pour when it's done rather than too much in the way of any muddy colours but time will tell about all that. It certainly looks really cool in the cup. Let's go with some yellow. Oh, that yellow is quite thin compared to the orange I just put in. I think some in the um, over time, some of these sometimes get mixed up and left for quite a long time. And I think over time, some of them seem to get thinner, which makes no sense to me. Oh no, I wasn't concentrating. I've put purple and yellow together. I know purple and yellow aren't gonna go well. Oh well, okay, we'll see how it goes. So some of the paints seem to thicken up. Um, some of them seem to get thinner, which I don't understand. A little bit of blue, blue's got a bit of gunk on the top. Let's get rid of that for there. So let's see, the cup looks delicious. Very rainbow bright, shall we say. But only when we flip it up will we know what we're going to get. So in terms of the mix for all of the paints, I've mixed the paints uh, according to my usual mix, which is two parts of paint to one part of Floetrol. Um, and then water as needed to get to that creamy consistency. And all of them have got treadmill built lubricant in them. So I've got pretty much um, all of the same volume of all of these colors. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six colors, and I've pretty much put the same in the cup of each. So the cup looks absolutely crazy. Let's see what happens when we flip this up. For one, are we gonna get any cells? Because I've put all of the paints in here really, really carefully. Um, so they've not mixed at all to create any cells within the cup. So let's see what happens when we flip. So if this creates any cells, it will basically be by me lifting the cup and the paints kind of accelerating through and over each other. So I'm a little bit nervous because the colours are crazy, even for me. And without the, uh, the little bit of white between the colours, I'm a little bit apprehensive about how it's going to turn out today. Do a little tap for luck and then let's lift and go. Well, yep, yeah, that is pretty crazy. Pretty crazy indeed. Goodness, those colours. I can see it's going slightly that way. I'm just gonna tip it back. That cup is crazy too. Wow, that cup is amazing. Oh, I'm not sure if you can see if I bring it up to the camera, it's not enough light. I need to stop and take a photograph of that cup right now. 
So let's move this around a little bit. Oh, or shall I torch it? Yeah, let's torch it. I very rarely torch my paints these days, so it's already got lots of cells come up, but if I torch it, we'll see what happens. Oh, I don't have much gas in my torch, so probably not very much is gonna happen. There's barely any gas. <laughs> that goes to show how often I use it these days, barely at all. It's gone. Okay, so let's just tilt and see what we get. Wow, those colours. I'm just going to slowly kind of do it round a little bit in a circle. I feel they're not looking too attractive, for which I'm a bit disappointed. But we will keep going and see what happens. start to take it off the sides a little bit and over here a bit more Wow, there are some crazy colour combinations in this one. Absolutely crazy. So it's got it covered. Let's pop it down and see what I think. Yeah, I think that's crazy. Bring it a little bit more in shot. Wow, the colours on that are amazing. So I am going to um, just add a bit more gas to my torch and see if we can bring up any more in this. makes me very very happy you know I love my bright colors and you really can't get much brighter than that this contrast here between this um, this warm red and the cobalt blue are absolutely amazing and it's got some really pretty multicolored cells down here this bit here is kind of weird um, it's I've got kind of much more broken up cells than I usually get and this bit here is really beautiful so let me bring you down and show you some of the details of this one so will you just look at those colours? Oh my word, that makes me very happy. That contrast there between the red and the blue is wonderful. Got this great section over here, all these lovely cells coming through. And then over on this edge, the blue and the, um, the orange are contrasting really well. And then as we come back through the centre, got a really nice section that I love just here too. So this has turned out to give quite an interesting and pretty random result. I've got a lot of really nice sections in here. Plus I've got the overall really, really bright looking effect that I love so much. So for me, this one is a definite keeper. I'm going to dry it off, varnish it and show you what it looks like when it's finished. And here it is finished and it's lovely. I was a bit worried that without the white that the colours would dry really really dark and it wouldn't be um, so vibrant and certainly they are darker than when they are wet of course because all acrylics tend to be like that and the um, the transparent ones it, uh, particularly where they're going to be on top of other darker colours underneath they will go darker but I think overall I'm really really happy with the colours in this one it's really really vibrant and bright and lots of really great details this blue and the orange well all the colors and the pink absolutely love them so thank you very much for following along and never be afraid to experiment with your paints you never know what you're going to get so just throw them all in break the rules because there are no rules in acrylic pouring and hopefully you'll get paintings that you're really happy with too see you again soon on acrylicpouring.com <laughs>